Jack Hermanson taking on Cesar Ferreira. Jack Hermanson, a minus 230 favorite comeback on Ferreira. Plus 170. I got to go Jack Dak. This is interesting because actually Sportsbook released this oh, line. Oh, that's a terrible line. Sportsbook released this line yesterday. It was basically a straight pick. Yeah, I'd like they that. had like minus 125, like plus 105. Yeah, cool. I'll be cool with that. Money has surged yeah. on Jack Hermanson. <laughs> surged on him. To the point now that I'm looking at it, just like, all right, one thing that we know about Cesar Ferreira, his chin is gone. But what have we seen in his last two fights? As long he's as he doesn't get aware hit. <laughs> yeah, that yeah, his yeah. chin is gone. He knows his chin's gone. And Jack Hermanson isn't exactly a power puncher. We no. haven't seen him. He's went, or, you know, uh, Ferreira's went up against guys like uh, Olawale Bambase. He's went up against uh, Anthony Lionheart Smith, not exactly the pow- biggest power puncher, Still but he's got, he's got some power. Down, yeah. And uh, Ferreira has become self aware. That I don't have the chin anymore. So he tries to stay out of that range. He only enters to get the takedown. And then when he's on the ground, he's pretty legitimate. He's super, yeah. super strong. I'm getting tempted. You know, I've said some awful things before on this podcast about, uh, you know, about Ferreira's chin. And he's burned me. He's burned me the last two times. I'm not going to get burned again. I'm, I'm starting to think uh, Ferreira by sub uh, is possible. There is not a, uh, a price on that yet. Uh, you know the line just got released last night. They haven't any. They haven't created any uh, pricing on that yet. But uh, Cesar Ferrer is plus one seventy. I'm I'm getting tempted in that direction. If it was a pick, I'd be on. Uh, I'd be on Hermanson. But uh, the the juice keeps keeps climbing, climbing, and I don't think it's warranted. What's your take? Yeah. So my take is this is gonna be a tough fight. It's gonna be a really tough fight. And the thing is, a minus two thirty in Jack Hermanson, you just can't bet it. If it was mm-hmm. even, like you said, what it opened at, which I would, if it was even, I'd be all over Jack Hermanson. Yeah. If it's minus one thirty Jack Hermanson, I think they got the price right. If it was minus one fifty Jack Hermanson, I'm, I'm putting like a little bit on it. Anything beyond that, I don't want to touch it. And minus 230, that's a gross exaggeration. But one thing I really liked about Jack Hermanson is that in his last fight against Scott Askham, this guy, he, he went through it all, man. He hit Scott Askham with everything but the kitchen sink. Now, I know what you're saying. He doesn't have any punching power. Does he not have punching power? Or does Scott Askham have a granite chin? Because I honestly think Scott Askham that other guy that he has took a on, granite chin. that other guy that he took on on like that Venator card as well, I remember. Well... Coming into the UFC, Jack Hermanson was coming off a win over. He fought in Venator. Yeah, that Polish dude who Which I can't pronounce his name. They knocked him out. And his fight before that, I know, but Alan like Carlos, he, he knocked him just, out too. He was a vol- He was landing just a whole bunch of volume against a guy who he's really bl- like bloated. Didn't look like he really had any business in there. He's knocked out three of his last six opponents with a submission mix in the way. And when I look at that fight against Askham, those punches. I mean, listen, th- th- this punch right here. Knocks out Caesar Ferrer, right? You just got to avoid getting hit with anything whatsoever. I'm not going to lie. Oluwale kind of clipped him and put him down, but he was okay. He can survive because, as you mentioned, he's aware. He's self-aware now. Do not. Self-aware, self-aware do not Mutanche is a dangerous Mutanche. <laughs> It is a dangerous Mutanche because people f- often forget he's a BJJ black belt and yeah. a good one. Yeah. Oh, you guys like that Tiago Moreto Santos? Well, not anymore after Eric Spicely choked him out. But yeah, dude, this guy fin- dusted him out in like 47 seconds with his grappling game. Cesar yeah. Ferreira has a good grappling game. But the biggest thing is he tries to go down to 170 against George Masvidal and he <clears> loses. <throat> and then that I think that was him saying, you know, my chin's not that bad, guys. It's just... These guys are big at middleweight. Goes down to yeah. 170, gets knocked out all the same. Comes back up to 185, and it's like, okay, I'm just going to rely on my ground game. Oluwale Bangbase has no ground game, so you can get this guy down. Anthony Smith should have done a lot better than he did on the grappling, but it didn't. So Cesar Ferreira is still a very dangerous guy, but in a 15-minute fight, you're going to get hit at some point. And if he gets hit, he's going to be in a world of trouble. Now, Jack Hermanson, for as much as I do like Jack Hermanson, I don't know that Jack Hermanson can comfortably keep this fight standing the entire time. He needs to keep the fight standing the entire time, but he's slower than Cesar Cesar Mutanche Ferreira, and he has a worse ground game than Cesar Ferreira. So Cesar Ferreira plays it smart, dances around the outside, let Hermanson come to him, get that takedown. Sounds like you're coming to my side, that plus 170. Only because it's plus 170. Yeah. I would, uh, you know what? I'm going to dog or pass. I'll tell you why I'm going to dog or pass. I would never put money on Caesar Ferreira. Pa! That chin, not gonna happen. That being said, 
Minus 170. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty tempting, let me tell you, okay? Yeah. Pretty tempting. Uh, if you like laying a wager, it. that's that's the wager. Well, we talk about this all the time. It's a path to victory thing. MMA, there's so many different paths to victory that you got to conceivably see the path to victory for someone to put a, a wager on them. Yeah. When I look at dogs and I think to myself, you know what? Zach Otto has a path to victory because if the fight stays standing, he's the better striker. He'll just outpoint him for 15 minutes. When I think about Antigulov, it's the same thing. It's like, you know what? R- R- Lima's going to get tired out. My com- combat sambo background, I'm going to keep it standing. I'm going to get him down the second round. I'm going to ground and pound this guy. I'm going to get a second round finish out of this. Darren Stewart, I see the path to victory for him. Now, there's other guys on the card, like like you and Morley Alves. There's a path of victory for him. Someone like Corny Casey Sanchez or Noguera, I don't really see the path well, of Noguera victory. Well, Noguera could potentially it's MMA, he could, knock him out. But there's not that glaring thing that jumps off at you. With Cesar Ferreira, he does have the better ground game. Mm-hmm. He is the more experienced guy. He is fighting at home. He's got the better submissions. And, and it's plus 170. It's yeah, a nice you've never price. seen anybody in better shape than this guy physically. I mean, well, you need to grade that cheese. Just let's His just borrow Caesar Mutanche's yeah. abs a little real quick. This guy's shredded, right? He's shredded. He's going to be able to hurt guys in certain spots. I think Jack Hermanson wins this fight. I do not think Jack Hermanson wins this fight at minus 230. That's just crazy. Mm-hmm.